What's up, everybody? This is Dark Masic with Brutally Delicious, coming at you with a review of Amaranth's brand new album, The Catalyst. So for those who don't know Amaranth, they're what I call a dance metal band. I think other terms include pop metal. Some people say symphonic metal, but I don't think that quite captures it because they don't sound anything like Epica. And some people say metalcore, which I hear with one of the three vocalists, but not the other two. I'm going to stick with my original label, Dance Metal. The primary vocalist is female, and then there are two males who back up. I have seen Amaranth twice before, once on 70,000 Tons of Metal 2017, and then just a couple months ago opening up for Dragon Force in the States. And I gotta say, I think this is a great continuation of what I believed Amaranth to sound like. I know the album Maximalism pretty well, because that's what they were touring on when they played 70k. This one reminds me of that, but I would say it's quite a bit darker. There are very few bands where saying they got darker is a bad thing. It is every bit as energetic and bombastic and unifying as everything else we've ever heard of them. But they also sound a little more hurt this time, and I mean that in the best way possible. It's kind of ironic that I'm a big power metal guy saying this, but isn't most great art created by people who are hurt? I guess it takes being beaten down to want to make songs that say, let's all stand together. Last thing of note before we get into some songs. This album has some really great guitar solos. And it's funny because the emphasis is clearly on the vocals with this band, and yet they still manage to make solos that are more interesting than a lot of guitar-focused ones. Alright, let's talk about some songs. The album opens up with the title track, The Catalyst, and my first thought is, dance, motherfucker, dance. I don't dance when I'm at weddings and stuff, but this song got me thinking, damn, I should. It's got a great driving feel. The chorus is anthemic and amazing. It never lets you get down. It's totally upbeat. And I'm going to use a word I used previously, unifying. You feel like you're one with them when you hear this. Like, seriously, I'm in lower Manhattan right now, and that's usually a ghost town after 7 p.m., And tomorrow is supposed to have a big snowstorm, so especially everyone is home. And I still felt like I was there in a crowd. Damnation Flame. This is another fantastic jump in the air with a song. More of that unifying you're one of us stuff. There's some really compelling energy in the vocals, primarily in the chorus, of course. And speaking of, I don't know what the chorus means. Like, what is a damnation flame? I understand damnation. I understand hell is flames, but I never heard the two put together. That said, damn if it isn't catchy. I'm reminded of Dio. I've brought this up previously, but most of Dio's lyrics don't actually make sense if you start to analyze them. But when you hear them, they sound real. Interference. This is less of an upbeat dance. My vibe here is like a good breakup song. I don't actually have the lyrics, but the vibe I'm getting is, this is who I am, go fuck yourself if you don't like it. Funny, all the other ones are kind of unifying. This one is more stand apart. It's going to be so funny when I read the lyrics and I totally misinterpreted this, but that's the vibe it evokes. Stay a little while. Here's a great ballad. It's not sappy at all. This is actually what I was thinking of when I said previously that the album is darker. The Amaranth ballad that is burned in my memory is the last track of Maximalism called Endlessly. This song is way darker than that one. This is much more tumultuous, and I think it's a very respectable effort from a band that could probably coast on sappy love ballads. Last but not least, Resistance. Now we're back to the let's party and band together kind of song, and it's still great. It has me wondering why metal bands often write songs about resisting, I guess, the normies, or like, what are they resisting? The ills of society? It's certainly not alcohol and drugs, eh? I guess it's kind of a sister concept to stand alone. Wow, these are all kind of contradictory, aren't they? So this was a great follow-up from a band that I kind of lost for a few years. More so than probably any band in recent memory, this stuff needs to be played live. A lot of the more symphonic metal that I listen to, I can tell would not go over live without a ton of backing tracks. But this stuff is just all in the singers and specifically Elise being able to get the audience going. And that's very apparent in the music. It has a great live feel to it. So if you need a good addition to your workout playlist, give this one a listen. Rock on. Hey, this is Chris Swinney, formerly of the Ataris and currently host of That One Time on Tour, part of the Sound Talent Media Podcast Network. 
Have you ever wondered what it's really like on the road? The highs can be euphoric, but the lows can be crushing. Join me every week as I chat with industry pros about what it's like living out their wildest dream and in some cases, their worst nightmare. Past guests of the show include members of NoFX, Pennywise, Bad Religion, and more. Listen and subscribe at SoundTalentMedia.com.